Hello. Today we want to talk about appropriating images, pre-existing images, and using them for your own purposes. And to show you what I mean by that, um, I just want to put um, these materials aside and just show you some of the images that you might come across that you might be working with. This is a magazine I used to read. This is 2008, so that's a kind of a long time ago. I don't really have magazines lying around, but I happen to have those stuck between some books. It's an architecture magazine and interior decoration, I guess, about homes. And so when I buy it, I you know expect to have advertisements for nice floor finishings, um, for kitchen upgrades, And then I find something like this. Of course, I've already, um, and I'm kind of like surprised because I'm looking for architecture and suddenly I have this striking image with red and yellow and a couple um, in the middle with a man. The man has like a streamlined look. He looks like he's in a wind tunnel and this woman um, moving forward very confidently, but what I'm really struck by is the emphasis on curves here. Look at these curves and how they're repeated in this um, incredibly statuesque um, image of a woman. This is a magazine that proposes that form follows function. So there's a lot of like shapes in here um, which emphasize function and form. So I'm looking at how form follows function in these women suddenly. It's almost like this architectural, this male architectural viewpoint of the world has been transferred onto female bodies. I find this one is interesting because she's not so curvy. And I'm like, why is she so curvy and why is she not curvy? How are they different? What kind of personalities are, are being shown here to us? So what I want you to understand is Within context, oh, here's another one. Within context, um, what I'm expecting here is like pictures of architecture, but clearly this magazine is selling me not only architecture, but something else. Um, it's selling me uh, lifestyle, and it's selling me also images of how um, people should look, specifically um, how female people should look, um, how they can look, how they should look, what the ideal is, and um, what kind of shapes that would have. I think that's a very strange shift in topic. Like we start talking about architecture and then we start talking about stereotypes um, of, of ideal women. What are these stereotypes? And this is kind of like the research that I'm trying to propose to you for this project. What kind of messages are we getting here? Of course, the overlying message is everything is stylish and if you have money, you can buy these clothes. But underneath that, there's another um, message, which is how you should look. I feel like they're proposing that I should look like this with this streamlined hair and these streamlined glasses. Anyway, um, here's other images suddenly. Like once you start looking for them, you realize that this whole magazine um, has a lot of like basically semi-nude women. This is, oh, well, look at that. Um, but these are legs. Here's a woman lying on the floor. Here's a woman wearing cement. Um, as jewelry. Here's a woman sitting alone in, a, in an empty palace, I guess. So suddenly we're coming across these um, images of women and they all have very strong messages to us about how we should think about female forms. And I think what I want to do is I want to analyze these messages. And I'm going to do that by um, First of all, I'm gonna take all these images out. I'm actually going to keep the magazine because it has really great ideas in there. <laughs> if ever I get to have my own place. Um, yeah, so I'm taking out all these images and we're just gonna look at these. This is part of your research. This is, a, this is by the way, um, a really fantastic um, 
advertisement for a shower because you never see old people in ads and you certainly never see them naked. So this is an ad that I actually look at. Um, I'm not going to use her because she's too small. I want to have images of women who are about the same size so that I can compare them and, and analyze them. But she definitely, with this striking haircut, is going to be in there. Um, and already I have four, so that's, that's enough for me to start off with. What we're going to do is we're going to analyze these images, and we're going to do that um, with drawing. We're going to use drawing. We're going to use um, some of those um, two design techniques that we've explored so far. First of all, let's look at where these images are going to go. Um, they're going to go in, your, in the pad that you have in your kit. And I suggest you subdivide your page into four equal squares. You don't have to do that. You can do any kind of um, composition that you want to do. But I find that having the comparison of four images next to each other is going to create um, the kind of objectivity that I'm looking for when I'm researching and analyzing images. And this, this project is about researching and analyzing. So some of the things you're going to need apart from the images is pencils, a cutting knife, of course a sharpener, drafting tape. You're going to need some of the black paint that's included in your kit, a brush, and um, your ruler. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subdivide this uh, page into four equal squares. I'm going to use this pencil for that. It doesn't have to be too strong. I have to uh, subdivide it just like this. Now, when you don't have um, this kind of ruler, which makes it really easy to create perfectly perpendicular lines, you can do it by measuring. And this is 12 long, so the middle will be exactly at 6. Across it is exactly 9. It's not exact, but it's good enough. So we'll do 4 and a half. And so you measure um, the sides and divide them equally into 2 to get 4 equal squares. This is about it. So this is, the, um, this is the new work of art that we're going to be creating, and, and you have a bigger pad, so you can use any format that you want to for this assignment. It should be you know, at least this size, but it can be bigger. Um, and what I want to do is I want to somehow compare these shapes and compare these images of women and see what happens once we start contrasting and comparing these images. What's going to come out? I don't know. I'm still really fascinated by these curves here. That's a, whoever looked at this, whoever um, designed this, definitely knew Baldessari. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with one of these images and you're going to need some transparent paper. And for this I actually use, for the transfer of these images, I actually use a 4B because I'm going to use um, the line that I make here to transfer the image over here. Honestly, what I'm really interested in here is just simply these curves. So I'm just gonna start tracing these curves just along these lines. And as you do this, you know, I, I, I don't have a plan for, for this video. I'm just, you know, going to follow this and see where it takes me. Um, I do think it's a good idea to use drafting tape. Whatever you do, this helps to stabilize what you're working on. You don't have to worry about it shifting. 
I actually kind of also like the lines of the man here, so I'm going to include those as well. I'm not sure I really want her accessories. I feel like that's going to detract from the image itself. So I'm just going to leave out the accessory for now. Focusing on the curves here. Honestly, you can change as you go along and see where this is going. See what it is that you want to work with. So this is kind of something that Baldassari would have been doing with a photograph, with photography, but we're going to do it with drawing. And we're going to highlight these elements that kind of interest us. Obviously what's interesting me here as I'm doing it is the way these lines create a connection between the man and the woman. And how these, I'm going to include her hand now after all. Why not hold her purse? Maybe the purse is kind of important. Okay, so you kind of have an image that's going to fill this square, and that's basically what we're after. We're after an image that's going to fill this square, and that's gonna fit into this square. And this is gonna work fine. And um, just do that with the four other images. Okay, so now we're going to um, transfer those images into our into our into our new work. <clears throat> All of these fit here. The, one of the things that you should be thinking about now is where you want to place them. I feel like some kind of really weird story is being told here. What I really liked about this image, and I, in tracing it, I focused on that, the Eileen Fisher ad. I love these slinky lines. They're so different from these, I don't know, they're so different from these curvy lines, right? Everything here is about curves. Everything here is about drapery, how it flows down. This again has very different lines. This is about kind of like these horizontal lines in the clothing and how it arrests the downward movement. So it gives like a very strong sense of structure. And here everything is about frilliness, all these frills. So just on a graphic level, like in taking apart these images, you start to notice things. And of course these, if you learned anything this semester, these lines are not just there, they actually communicate something to us. Um, here you have these curves communicating the tension, right? These architectural tension between the man and the woman. Um, this looks a little bit like freedom. It's like flowing water. It looks very healthy and very natural. Um, this looks complicated and fun. And again, this is very interesting. It looks very structural and contained, like every line is somehow interrupted at some point. So at this point, when you transfer these lines onto your transparent um, paper, you can start to apply them by just turning around the pencil drawing and placing it just about in the square where you want it. And of course, taping it down. So that the pencil drawing that you, that you traced, right, your pencil tracing is on this side of the paper. And now we're going to turn it around 
And when you retrace these lines with a somewhat harder pencil, they're going to transfer to the paper below. This is pretty much the same principle that we were using in the oil transfer drawing. Except you're not working with oil, you're working with graphite. You just transfer these, you just redraw these lines but on the other side and you can see that um, they actually show up on your paper. And you can continue doing this for all these lines until you have them all together. So now that we've transferred all these images as line drawings onto the format that we're using, um, we want to transfer them one more time on our finished, onto our finished surface. And in order to do that, um, we're going to just make a stencil out of this. This is pretty straightforward, but as you do it, um, think about positive and negative shapes and which lines are important and which are not. As you can see, I um, how did I choose these? I really think that these lines go well together and they seem to be moving into the scene. As I said earlier, I like these lines because they're so falling, right? They're all going in the same direction. Here we have this, these frills, so we'll look at that a little bit. Here we have like a balance of vertical and horizontal lines, so I like that as well. <clears throat> Honestly, this process is a lot about exploration and about analysis, about research. So I don't approach this project with a finished product in mind. I'm thinking more about what am I going to discover? What am I going to see? What is, how is this going to look at the end? Like, this is completely new to me. I didn't know that this was going to look this way even like 20 minutes ago. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be turning this into a stencil. And then I'm going to use this stencil to transfer the image onto the final um, piece of paper. And we're going to add some color to that as well. So as you start, I, I, I like... I actually like these knives better than the ones that are in the kit, but they're a little bit more expensive, so I picked the other one for you. Um, just make sure that you have a good sharp tip and always cut away from your hand. You never want to be cutting towards your hand because you're just gonna cut off your finger. So let's start. Um, I'm starting to like these negative shapes. I'm gonna start with these negative shapes. This is a thigh, so kind of think about that this is a thigh. Think about the shapes that what they actually are as you're cutting them. And this is a form of analysis as well. Thinking about how this form begins and ends, about its corners, about its curves. And remember, whatever you cut away now, um, that's gonna be black. So I like this shape, I'm going to repeat that here in the pants of the man. So we're going to go with this as negative shapes. But you don't have to be dogmatic about that. You can... I believe that even in a project where you're doing research, um, that there's a lot of intuition. Just go with your intuition. I like these lines just as they are, so I'm going to like just do a little um, thin cutouts of these lines. That doesn't have to be that difficult. You just basically follow the line and then you do it one more time. It doesn't matter if it's exactly the same width. In fact, I think it looks a little bit better if the width increases and decreases. At this point, you're really observing these abstract shapes of these figures. Um, you're kind of losing track of the fact that they even are figures. Here we have some lines and you can take those out. And this is, these images are now starting to emerge. I like 
like this as a line. Basically, when I'm working here, it's almost like a call and echo process. I do one line, and then I think about what, what line belongs to that. And as we're doing that, we're analyzing what the graphic designers actually were doing. Like, what kind? what is this image, actually, that we're looking at? What are the shapes here, yeah, like this line with that line? Um, I'm going to stick with this. Sometimes, if I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, this is his jacket. So I'm going to actually use this as a negative shape as well. That will also intensify or emphasize her, her curves. There are two things in the lecture that I was trying to get at, um, three things actually, and that is the process of these deacons, of these picture generation artists is, first of all, appropriation, right? None of these images that I'm appropriating, um, basically stealing, are mine. But I'm, um, I'm using them for a different kind of artwork and I'm changing them sufficiently that I'm not going to be um, facing a lawsuit. Also, I'm not selling this for a million dollars on Sotheby's, so nobody really <laughs> cares. Um, the second thing they do is fragment these images, and rather than taking the whole image, right, I'm starting to use fragments, and even as I fragment it, I shift the emphasis. Um, the emphasis is no longer on her fancy clothes, it's now on the lines and how they interact in this portrait of the couple. Um, And as I'm fragmenting it, this is kind of like a line. Some of these lines are going to find are not exactly as they are. And you might have made some mistakes here in transferring the lines. So this is her outline. This is her silhouette. So I'm just going to continue that. I don't have a line here. I guess I forgot that. But it doesn't really matter. And as I do these lines and transfer them and shift the emphasis, I'm interpreting. I'm interpreting what, what the original image is. I'm trying to look at what the hidden meanings are, what the actual content is. The superficial content is, yeah, it's selling me clothes. But actually, it's doing much more than that. It's basically selling me a norm of how human beings should interact, how they should look and how they should interact. This line now can be made to correspond with the pants of the man. And of course, you know, these are decisions. When you're interpreting something, you make decisions. And my decisions are guided by questions. And some of these questions are, how do these gender roles relate? What are the gender roles for men and women? And how, how are they constructed? And how, how are they supposed to appear in the world of advertising agencies? Who are we supposed to be? Right? What, what do ad agencies want us to look like? And how do they want us to behave? And once I know that, I can decide that maybe I don't want to behave that way. Or maybe I decide, wow, that's cool, I want to be that way. But you have to gain this awareness first. You have to first know what it is that is being asked of you. What roles are you supposed to play? And then you can decide whether you want to play them or not. But if you never think about this, then you'll just be blindly repeating what somebody else is saying. And that's exactly what we're not doing here. We're repeating, but we're repeating not um, with open eyes. So 
So this is pretty much enough here. And as you do these lines, just, just have a little bit of fun with it. it. Honestly, if you'd spend too much time with this, this is probably the most time intensive part of this whole assignment. Um, but you don't have to sit here for hours. So you do the same thing now for the other figures as well. So at this point, um, you're going to have all your lines cut out and you're going to have a working stencil for the final image. One of the things that I'm asked um, in the course again and again is why we can't use Photoshop. And I'm just going to say doing this process um, is exactly why we don't use Photoshop because while you're doing these lines, while you're drawing, you're cognitively constantly weighing things and you're evaluating things and you're exploring aspects of drawing. Um, the time that you put into this is actually the time spent thinking about images. And if you're just using Photoshop, you're missing that time that you're putting into thinking about images. And of course, what we're doing in this class is thinking about images. Um, you can do beautiful plays with light, by the way, which is really something that should be explored. Also, like using conventional photo photography processes with, with actual photosensitive emulsion, you could totally use this to make uh, an image in photography. Anyway, the next step for us is going to be to transfer this onto another piece of paper. So again, we're going to apply the same grid to this paper that we applied, um, that we used to make these images. And again, the process is the same. Um, you s divide the length and you divide the width on all sides, four and a half here by six or nine by 12, which is the format of this paper. Do your grid, make your grid. And so this is going to be actually the final, this, this is the support for your final work, for your final investigative work. And the steps that are remaining and that we're gonna be discussing on Wednesday are, you want to color these squares in different colors. Um, and then you want to transfer this image on top of those colors. And you're gonna use the um, golden acrylic that we have, and I'm gonna um, show you how to mix that with a little bit of water um, in the next uh, demonstration. But basically, if you wanna go ahead and work on this on your own, you can also just you know go ahead. Otherwise, we're gonna discuss the rest of the process on Wednesday. Basically, color, and then you apply these images. Um, you can also do that first and then, the, and then color it. Um, it's gonna come out differently. I think it's neater if I put the design on top because it's gonna just add this, um, the sharpness of these black lines. Okay, um, I'll see you on Wednesday.